possible. Reverend Hagler, what's your take on all this? What's your reaction to the apparent role that the PC backlash is playing in our politics at a, at a crucial time as the parties winnow their fields from, from right. four and eight and ten down to, to one and eventually of course we'll have a we'll have a head-to-head -head battle between the well, top Democrat top Republican. Well let's understand what we're talking about. When we're talking about political correctness, right, you're talking about respecting other people. You're talking about being respectful of other people, allowing people to have their own dignity uh, and political incorrectness is racist, it's xenophobic because it really in a sense diminishes people's humanity. Uh, it is the most negative thing that anybody can say about somebody else. Uh, so it characterizes people in negative ways, it stereotypes people uh, in ways that are ultimately destructive. When we look at the Donald Trump phenomenon, we need to look also at the, his the history of this country. Uh, one, the history of this country is, is, is racist uh, in its character. Uh, there are some challenges that have white America has had to face uh, and in the last uh, six years or so, which has been the election of a black president. And there has been a clear response to that president uh, to try to do everything Thing in order to, to block him, uh, to uh, diminish uh, uh, the dignity of the office because he's in there. Uh, and, and we've seen that uh, type of reaction after reconst in Reconstruction after the Civil War. Uh, again people tried to basically restore the Confederacy back to office and did so after the compromise, right? Uh, and so we're really facing this kind of white supremacist paradigm all over again. Dan, can you help, uh, you know, for people who don't quite get the the feelings that are out there. Can mm -hmm. you help us? Sure, sure. Uh, no, uh, 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 wrap our brain Look, around. We, we, we always meet on the. We always here. hear from from civil rights leaders, from from activists, from many on the liberal side that we need to have a conversation about race in this country. Unfortunately, that conversation has been made much harder because many white Americans are afraid to say what they believe because they know that if they do say what they believe, that they will be accused of being, as the Reverend said, racist, bigots. These are words that have been thrown around so much that to many Americans, they've almost lost all meaning. Well, at the same time, uh, we know very, very well that if you say the wrong thing in this country, uh, if you appear racially insensitive, you can even lose your job. You, it can hurt your career. It can do a lot of damage to you. Um, and I think people... No, but see, so you're, failing to, you're failing to admit that there is a paradigm in this country, a historical paradigm that is built upon white supremacy that basically characterizes and uses people of color as tools to be exploited. Even the announcement of Donald Trump, for example, was a, a cold word of race when he talked about uh, Mexicans being rapists uh, and murderers, right? Not robbers and murderers, not, not extortionists and murderers, but rapists. And that's the old type of code language telegraphed to the white community that you need to be careful with your women because there's the big brown boogeyman that's lurching in the dark. It's the same kind of for, for, uh, scenario that folks talked about in terms of black I, I, I'm not sure if we, Donald Trump is deep enough to know uh, that, that. But let me, let me put it this way. Even the other, even the other have, thing the other day have, when he talked about Hillary Clinton being, and used that Yiddish word, uh, uh, again, Please don't say it. Right. <laughs> I'm not going to say that right. word. Dan, right. but, 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 but I wanted to answer Here's the truth. Here's the truth about what we see going on in this country right now. When real, actual racism rears its head, when it reared its head in Charleston, South Carolina, when it reared its head with Donald Sterling, uh, you saw the entire country come together, unite, and condemn it. Now, there are other situations, like the situation with M Michael Brown, uh, where the facts weren't known. And that's where the Black Lives Matter movement got its impetus. They came out, they rioted, they started. Oh, you, you well, well, let me let me finish. Let me, let me finish. The, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not concerned with the historical of pattern. Of okay, but, 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 yeah. don't even talk about that. They, they operated on a wrong premise. When we they dealt, did, when we dealt they with Trayvon they not only we did, dealt with Trayvon again Martin, another situation, down, another situation where, killed, where right? the media the narrative is, where Trayvon Martin. Time out. Time out. Time out. We can't. We can't hear both at one time. When you say, and you need to wise up and open up your eyes and see that there has been a historical pattern in this country of white supremacist violence against uh, against black people. When you say the facts weren't known in, in Ferguson, mm -hmm. uh, you think there's some ambiguity about what happened? Well, there's no ambiguity about it. Michael Brown didn't have his hands up when he was trying when he was shot. Now, the the Black Lives Matter movement, uh, even after all the facts were released, still went on with this lie. They still based their entire movement on this one event, and it, I, any other movement would have lost all well, credibility you, at this point because you, of you, that. You historically mischaracterized it. Why it has you, nothing to Robert, do with a, a a point in history. It's a historical pattern. It was just that there was a spark that brought people together. There was an original 
spark that brought people together, particularly the millennials together, uh, when Trayvon Martin was killed. Not this and it's millennial. Continu- and it's continued to go on. Say that again? It's not this millennial. I, well, I, I waited for the fact. I waited for the facts to come out. I waited for the facts to come out before I made anything for you because because the issue is is that there's a historical pattern. Why don't you admit that there's a historical pattern that gives you the ability, therefore, to deny that there's racism exists? Even I, I didn't you deny it. I just gave you two very good examples of how we all gathered together in this country, and the Republican-led legislature of South Carolina made the first move to take down the Confederate flag. After I want to go back. How to long have we been fighting to get the Confederate flag down? There was a boycott of South Carolina. There was a boycott that has been announced by civil rights groups, other groups engaged in that because it's been a long battle around that flag, that symbol of hatred. And the white community kept saying, it's not a symbol of hatred. It's a symbol of Southern pride, of Southern history. No, it was a symbol of hatred because all those flags went up in, in response to the civil rights movement, over, over the right to vote and over the right to uh, access public accommodation. That's when those flags went up all over. It is a symbol Dan. of hatred, and that's been a battle for a long time. It's not a new battle. Dan, mm-hmm. where is the self-censorship? What ideas aren't coming because of self-censorship. Well, the idea that, for for instance, there's a problem within the black community itself, where 70% of all black children are born out of wedlock, the family structure is decayed. That, in a sense, is believed by many to be a far greater problem than the actual than actual white on black racism. Uh, the situation with the police officers. We know for a fact. We well, know for a fact that there's a reason why police officers are in black communities. It's because that's where the crime is most concentrated. Yes, there's more white crime than black crime. At the same time, police are going to go where the crime is concentrated. We can't, you know, I say it because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a brave guy and I'm not, you know, going to be politically correct. Do you want to, uh, any response? Well, no, I think that sort of gets to my point, though, what he said. I mean, you, you know, we can't possibly know what's going on there, so we therefore shouldn't really talk about it. I mean, that sounds like what you're saying. If you're saying, well, you, you know, you were raised no, there. No, you no, I'm, saying, there. I'm, saying, I'm Reverend, saying you need to sit down with people long enough to know something about them something about what's going on, rather than sitting someplace in an ivy tower and making some assumptions on some statistics that you're reading somewhere, that's a part of the problem. The part of the problem is that people are talking about what they don't know about. They don't know about the struggles. They don't know about the systematic institutional racism that continues to grip the country. Mm-hmm. They don't know about that or bother to even try to figure that out. Well, what, what, what do you think stopping us from figuring it out? Because there are only certain things that could be, could be done to figure such things out. There are statistics. There are crime rates. We know what's going on I'll give on you a perfect example, system. just like we were waiting to go on the show. You, you don't have the carriage to even listen long enough. <laughs> Do you see what, this what, do you mean, what do you mean by well, that? Well, we were having some discussion about something he posted on, on Twitter a while back where he told the Black Lives Movement to basically F themselves uh, uh, big, and, and, and after, par- after Paris, uh, that type of stuff. It's, again, it's that type of provocative language. Now, see, my Can mama... Just, can I just... Can I, I, I just ma- wait, let me just say this real, real quick. My mama, and I hopefully your mama, taught you to be respectful of people. And if she taught you to be respectful of people, then that is political. Well, the progress. last thing the Black Lives Matter movement is doing is being respectful. No, of people. no, the Black Lives Matter Black movement. Lives is out movement. There. They, they, they are, they are, they are saying that all cops are bad. They're saying all cops are racist. They are rioting in you the are, streets. That's, that's they a are lie. using. That is an li- well, let's talk about lie. lies. Let's talk about lies. They're using Michael Brown. Huge lie. The, the basis of their entire movement. Now we don't even know the facts about Freddie Gray. They're marching in the streets. They're rioting in Baltimore. They're shutting down baseball stadiums. They're, they, the other day, they took over a Minnesota airport. Good. This is not well. Yeah, you love it, I'm sure, but this is not constructive. <laughs> Good. You Dan, took over the mall. You, you think this is a constructive way to make your point, Dan, and it's not. It made the whole country deal with it. That's why you're tweeting out the nastiest things you can tweet out about the Black Lives Matter. Because, because the Black Lives because Matter movement caught your attention. Because the Black Lives Matter attention. movement is a disgusting anti-American, it liberal attention. movement. No, really? Yes. <laughs> absolutely. Um, absolutely. The tactics they've been using. Oh, we the way it, we they've been. The way they've been taking things that are not facts and telling the country that they are in order to promote their agenda, that is wrong.